be able to remember or at least be able to be on the same page as us yeah so last lesson we started learning trig ratios remember that there's three different ratios that we are working with yes on your calculators it's the sine the cosine and the tangent button on our calculators all right i think one thing i forgot to mention is if your calculator is not giving you exact answers you might need to do this on your device or on your calculator itself yeah so if you've got something like mine you can't really see it but if you press the shift button and then you go mode okay and the third one there is degree so you need to go to degree you need to change your calculator to degrees mode if you haven't already done that just because your answers might be a couple decimals off which is not good it should be correct though miss uh renahan don't change it it won't change it if you do it again yeah so just keep that in mind yeah make sure you do that on your calculator if you have a really funky calculator i can do it for you but just uh we'll do that later all right last week we learned about the three different ratios and we learned how to label any triangle that's right angled yeah so what are the three names for any size of the triangle that's right angled yes abby do you have your hand up uh, give me one of the names, dude. Sign? No, not not quite. The names of the sides. Oh, Hypotenuse, which is the longest side. Good. What else have we got? Opposite. Opposite, which is all right. Now that's dependent on where the angle is. Yeah. So the opposite side of the angle is the opposite, and then the side next to it is called the adjacent, adjacent which is next to it. That's what adjacent means. Next to. All right. So once you've done that that will help you figure out which ratio to use but let's go back and figure out what are the three ratios first so the first one is sine of the angle so if you have sine that means you're working with a triangle that has an opposite and a hypotenuse depending on what you're looking for yeah you might be looking for the opposite so that means and you have the hypotenuse so you use the other ratio was cosine if this works all right you've got adjacent and hypotenuse so these three trig ratios are for finding sides if you're looking for the hypotenuse and you have the adjacent whoops that's the second ratio we worked with One before I get, we have cosine or okay. so, uh, so ka and tan, which is T -A -N. well, the three so it's tangent, but what are the two opposite sides in the triangle? Adjacent. That's it, opposite and adjacent. Yeah, so let's actually use these on uh, as an example. So, here, let's work this out. Shh. I've got me triangle. All right, name me. Tell me what's the hypotenuse here. Where's the hypotenuse? Tell me. The right side. The right side. The longest. So we'll get... my angle is here. So T uh, Tiana, I'm going to ask you if this is my angle. Where's my opposite? Very good. So that's my opposite, where the x is. Okay. And where's the adjacent? 15. Next to it, which is 15. Now, if I look at this, right, I've got. I'm looking for the opposite and I have the adjacent. Which ratio has O and A in it? Tan. Tan. Good. So that means we use the tan ratio. Write out your formula. So tan of the angle is equal to O over A. And then you just change the tan angle, which in this case is 35. <laughs> Sam, quiet please. Opposite is X and the adjacent is 15. So what happens when you get a question like this? You're trying to make X by itself, yeah? So this is divided by 15. If I bring it here, Celine, what happens to it? What's the opposite of divide? Time. So it becomes 15 times 10. So when you put that in your calculator, we're going to go 15 times the tangent of 35. Right, and that will be 10.5, whatever it is. All right. So 10.5, we just go there. 
oops, sorry, x equals. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Let's try a couple more and then we'll move on. Yeah, so another example. I think we did this together. All right, so this one's a bit funky. All right, what do we start first, guys? We always do the sides, yeah, label. All right, tell me what's the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse. Eight what's eight? eight. Good. There's my angle here. So what's my opposite is? Opposite. Right there. And the adjacent is? X. X. Okay, now, again, I have my H. I don't have my A. So which ratio has O and H in it? Sin. A and H. Did I say O and H? A and H, sorry. It will be the cos ratio, yeah? Because it has A, H. So, cos of the angle... A over H. Okay, so from there, just change the numbers of the letters with the numbers. So the angle is 32, the adjacent is X, and the H is 8. Okay, so when you get, again, similar to the other question, here you're trying to isolate X. This is divided by X, so you bring it here, it becomes times. Okay, so that means X is equal to 8 times the cos of which is 32 thank you all right now equals 6.78 uh, we'll just go with that and then always put your measurements if you need to in this case it's centimeters all right all righty um i think that's it for the finding the actually continue now so finding Ang uh, finding forward, yeah? But Krish, can you tell me what do you think finding angles is going to involve? Negative signs? What do you mean by that, my friend? Yeah, so negative next to sine, cos, and tan. There is a magic word for that, which Sam is saying, which is inverse. Okay, so what we learnt about is how to find signs. But now, when it comes to finding angles, it's going to involve what we call an inverse. Alright, but in this case, an inverse ratio. Alright, we'll go, we'll get into that. So, as our... Uh, I would like us to be able to do today is to identify what's our inverse ratios. Okay, and how do we actually use them? Okay, that's our learning intention for this session. What is an inverse ratio? How do you use it? So a couple of things you need to remember is remember how to actually do this, yeah? Rearranging to find unknowns, which we just did a little bit of. Sometimes uh, your question might be like this, where the unknown is on the bottom, okay? And I think Abby got the hang of it where you might have to swap the unknown and the sign 60 here, which is what happened in this question. The unknown and the sign get swapped. Okay, and that will give you the unknown for that shape. But this is so laggy. We'll, we'll talk about it. So the inverse. Oh, there, there you go. There's learning intention. Listening. All right. So our intention: understanding your trig ratios. Okay, and using the inverse versions of them and then using that to find. Now, the thing is with inverse, yeah, this is something you need to know. Inverse trig is to find angles. Okay, find an angle. That's what you use them for. Inverse trig is for finding angles, not side lengths, angles. Yes, Sam? Yeah, we'll go through that shortly, bro. Okay. Okay. Just to have, it's the same idea, yeah? It's still sine, cos, and tan, but as Krish mentioned, instead of actually just going with the straight sine, cos, tan, you're using the inverse, which is above it. Okay, it's up there. you got to press shift first. So on your calculator, okay, you press shift, swoops, lags, Ugh. Okay, so you press shift first and then whatever ratio you're going to be using, yeah? So in this case, shift and then uh, sign. 
Thank you, listening, listening. So if you want to sign inverse, you go shift and then sign. If it's cos inverse, shift and then cos. What Chris mentioned was you've got to have that negative 1 on there. That's how you get the inverse. Okay. If you want to use tan, go shift and then tan. Okay. Inverse is the important thing. Uh, for this question. So make sure you're aware of how to do that. Again, your calculator has to be in degree mode for it. All right. So let's go through and actually understand how to use it. Now, with same, similar with the normal ratios, just make sure you start off with naming the sides of your triangle. You always start there. Name the sides first. Don't go ahead until you've done that. Okay, name the sides. And then from there, okay, again, remember, remember it's about finding the angle. Okay, so if you're given an angle, for example, there, and you don't know it, but you have opposite and you have adjacent, okay, and uh, you're looking for one of them, which ratio out of the inverses has O and A in it? 10. So that means you'll just use the tan ratio for that one. Similarly, if your hypotenuse and is, is given but your adjacent is missing, which ratio should you use? Cos, yeah, it's the same idea. It's just slightly different in terms of the way it's... Uh, shown to you so let's actually put it to practice i think we'll do the ones on your booklets together okay let's do that first one together always label it first yeah all righty so sienna can you label for me or tell me which one is my hypotenuse which length has hypotenuse on it good the five okay let's see kira can you tell me which is the opposite in this triangle if your angle's here, where's your opposite? What length is it? Tell me. 3.5. So that's your opposite. Now, according to this, I have my O I don't, I, and my H. Okay, so which inverse can we use to find the angle that has O and H in it? Sine. Sine. Okay, so you're going to use your sine. It's pronounced sine, guys. Yeah, exactly. So sine inverse O over H. Okay. And then, again, just change the numbers and the letters. So it's going to be sine inverse. My O is 3.5. Okay. And my H hypotenuse is 5. So on my calculator, that's literally all you type. Shift, sine inverse. And you can use your, cal your uh, fraction button, 3.5 over 5. Close the bracket. 44.42. Or four three. Uh, four three. Okay, you need you do need a calculator for this. Okay, forty four point four three. Did anyone else get a different answer? Because you may you may have not put your calculator in degree mode. Okay, make sure it's in degree mode. Okay, let's try another one. Try another one. Try the second one. All right, we'll. Try the second one. Let's go. Oh, sorry, if you're copying it, it's there. But remember, for any triangle, always start by labeling the triangle first. Okay, opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. Always, always. That's what you're doing. Okay, so let's look at this one. Uh, let's see. Who have I asked? Okay, like, can you tell me where is my hypotenuse? Good. So this one's 11, which is hypotenuse. And Celine, what's my adjacent? The bottom, which is? Good. Ben, which ratio am I going to use to find the angle that has A and H in it? Oh, thank you, Van. Or whoever said that. Okay, that ratio, because it has A and H in it. So, write the formula. Cos inverse A over H. Okay, adjacent here is 5, hypotenuse is 11, close the bracket, therefore the angle should be cos inverse of 5, use your fraction button if you need, or you can just go divide, same thing, oops, oops, uh, yeah, okay, equals, did we get 62.96? Beautiful. 62.96. All right. Any questions? 
Right, so it's the same procedure. Just use this. Make sure you have that in your bound reference, actually, if you can. Those three ratios. So you've got to have them so you know which ones to find or which ratio to use. But remember, normal trig ratio is for finding what, guys? Just normal ratios. Finding unknown size. But inverse is for finding angles. So keep that in mind, yeah? Normal, normal ratio for sides, but trig ratio inverse 